In this video, we'll be talking about cholinergic neurotransmission. So obviously, we are going to talk about the acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. So when it comes to neurotransmitter, they are chemical molecules that can transmit the signals between two neurons. So they are the messages by which neuron communicate with each other. So they are there are different types of neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, glutamate, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine and many more. But in this video our focus is on acetylcholine. So in this video we'll be talking about the cholinergic pathway in human brains, cholinergic neurotransmission, cholinergic receptors and we'll talk about acetylcholine from a disease context. So let's talk about the cholinergic pathways in the brain. So when it comes to the cholinergic pathway, there are different cholinergic pathways and it all starts from the basal forebrain. So the nucleus basalis and the medial septal nucleus radiates to different regions in the cortex and the hippocampus. And there is another particular sector where the cholinergic pathways are very prominent that is in the uh, pedunculopontine nucleus and lateral dorsal tegmental nucleus. So this can also project to different regions including brainstem, cerebellum and selected location in the cortex. So now we are going to focus on to the synapse and see the mechanism of neurotransmission in a bit more details. But before that let me quickly summarize. There are basal forebrain cholinergic system and pontomesencephalic tegmental cholinergic system. These are the two principal cholinergic system in human brain. Question is where do they project? The first one projects to several regions in the cortex and hippocampus. The second region projects to thalamus, basal ganglia and some portion of the cortex are also the cerebellum. So the function of the basal forebrain cholinergic system is to promote learning and memory related process. It can help in working memory formation. It helps in cognitive flexibility, attention, etc. The function of the pontomesencephalic tegmental system includes regulating sleep and wake cycle, arousal, motor control. It also modulate motor activities. So let's talk about the mechanism of cholinergic neurotransmission. So here is the presynapse. In the presynapse, acetyl-CoA gets converted with the help of acetylcholine uh, transferase into the acetylcholine. So the choline acetyl transferase is a key enzyme that converts acetyl-CoA into acetylcholine. Eventually acetylcholine is loaded onto vesicles with the help of vesicular acetylcholine transporters. Eventually the vesicles that contain acetylcholine will fuse in the presynaptic terminal. When the, neuro, when the uh, action potential reaches the presynaptic terminal, then the vesicle fusion happens and, it, and the acetylcholine gets, uh, uh, gets released into the presynapse. So then acetylcholine binds to the ligand gated ion channels in the postsynapse and eventually it opens the ligand gated ion channel. That leads to membrane depolarization and that triggers the postsynaptic events. Okay, so now let me tell you that acetylcholine esterase are enzyme that can break down acetylcholine into choline and acetate. Further choline is reuptaken by the presynaptic terminal which can be further be used to generate acetylcholine. Now let's talk about the cholinergic receptors. There are different kind of cholinergic receptors. There could be ionotropic cholinergic receptors which are fast, which are simply ligand gated ion channel. They open when the ligand binds. And there could be also metabotropic uh, cholinergic receptors which are muscarinic receptors which are slow receptors because they are G-protein coupled and they require intermediate players for the signaling. Now cholinergic neurotransmitter is really important in context of NMJ. In neuromuscular junction, nerve terminals end into the muscle. So the presynapse is the nerve and the postsynapse is the muscle. Now let's, let me talk about these synaptic boutons which are zones where a presynaptic motor nerve terminal meets a particular mu muscle. So that's the synapse. So we are now in the synapse. It's a zoomed in view. 
the process of making acetylcholine is very similar that what we have seen in the brain now let's see the neuromuscular junction uh, how the how it functions the overall functioning of the junction so when the vesicle fuses due to the action potential there would be uh, a fusion via V snare and the T snare so when the action potential reaches the synaptic terminal there is a huge amount of calcium influx elevation of the calcium influx triggers the V snare and the T snare fusion that lead to the vesicle release and the acetylcholine is now released in the cleft between the presynaptic motor terminals and the muscle now what happens is the postsynaptic event starts but also let me tell you and remind you that acetylcholine esterase can get rid of the extra acetylcholine after some time now let's look at the functioning of the postsynaptic cholinergic receptor so as they are ligand gated ion channel when there is binding of acetylcholine they open and lead this lead to influx of the cation that makes the membrane more positive and that leads to postsynaptic potential so postsynaptic potential can be recorded as excitatory postsynaptic current or epsp is excitatory postsynaptic potential change when there is a change in potential there would be a change in current now in the postsynapse there are other channels which lead to further influx of the uh, influx of cations that might lead to a overall muscle contraction so the key function of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction is to trigger the muscle contraction response there are specific threshold for these contraction if the stimulus is strong enough it would eventually reach the threshold and it would lead to a muscle contraction so this is really important to understand now let's talk about cholinergic transmission in a disease context so this is how normal brain look like in case of alzheimer's brain the cholinergic neurons are the ones which die eventually question is why they die now when it comes to myasthenia gravis which is a autoimmune disorder it is characterized by weakness of the muscle and fatigue so in this case the postsynaptic cholinergic receptors are targeted by auto antibodies these b cells are not supposed to make antibodies against these acetylcholine receptors but in this disease there is a mistake which lead to production of auto antibodies this lead to muscle damage and weakening of the muscular neuromuscular junction okay there are specific antagonist and agonist of uh, cholinergic transmission for example curare curare is basically a potential antagonist for uh, the neuromuscular junction especially the cholinergic system the red indians used it for their poison arrow it would block the uh, particular postsynaptic cholinergic uh, channels the nicotinic cholinergic channels this would lead to muscle paralysis same goes for latrotoxin this stimulates the neuronal calcium channels and lead to an excessive release of the acetylcholine this is also detrimental for the neuromuscular junction leading to paralysis so i hope this was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can su uh, support us more uh, using super thanks which is a heart shape icon present in the top uh, uh, bottom right corner of the video click on that and you can pay via paytm paypal or upi see you in next video